right here. Look at that. That's unbelievable. It's really, really clever. It's ingenious. These guys were dialed in. Alcatraz, once considered one of the most secure prisons in the world, holds a dark history. From its imposing facade to the infamous inmates locked within, before we go ahead and uncover the chilling discovery made within the tunnels of Alcatraz, did you know that it reportedly served as an inspiration for Azkaban, the inescapable fortress-like prison in the Harry Potter universe? So, are you ready to uncover the secrets that lie hidden beneath its impenetrable walls? Let's go ahead. Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary, commonly referred to as The Rock, stood as a fortress of high security on Alcatraz Island in the San Francisco Bay, California. While it is now empty, it once had a reputation as one of the most secure facilities in the United States. The prison's isolated location made escape endeavors seem exceedingly challenging, if not entirely futile. The prison commenced operations in 1934 and maintained an impeccable record of zero successful escapes for 28 years, until 1962, just a year before its closure. While the attempted escape may have contributed to the decision to shut down the facility, the primary factor was the excessively high cost of running the facility. The island was located approximately 1.25 miles from the shoreline of San Francisco and surrounded by seawater. The icy waters, with temperatures averaging around 53 degree F, made even the thought of escape seem intimidating. To further deter inmates and instill a sense of fear in them, the prison administration and guards encouraged myths. You know, no one gets off of Alcatraz, right? Right. You can try, but you're not going to be successful. Such as the tales of sharks lurking in the waters and marksmen with orders to shoot anyone trying to escape on sight. Though these claims didn't have any factual basis, they helped send a message to the inmates. They would remain locked up there until their sentences were served in full confinement. Due to Alcatraz's stringent security protocols, it housed some of the nation's most notorious criminals, including Al Capone and Machine Gun Kelly. But even the most unforgiving conditions couldn't extinguish the longing for freedom amongst the inmates. The prison has witnessed a total of 14 escape attempts, all of which ended in failure, resulting in the recapture or death of those involved, save for one exceptional case. This infamous escape, which tarnished Alcatraz's reputation, was orchestrated by four inmates, Alan West, Frank Morris, and brothers John and Clarence Anglin. While it is widely believed that only Morris and the Anglin brothers successfully fled, West played a pivotal role in the plan. However, a complication arose on the fateful night of the escape. Interestingly enough, these four inmates had previously attempted escapes before they were inevitably transferred to Alcatraz in the hopes of quashing any further attempts. And it was Alan West who was first struck by the inspiration to break free. Within the confines of Alcatraz, inmates were assigned various tasks, ranging from cleaning to carpentry and repairs. On one particular day, West was tasked with cleaning the roof above the cells. During his duties, West stumbled upon a ventilation duct hole, which led to the roof of the building. Unlike other openings, this one lacked a solid concrete covering and featured steel rods that appeared relatively easy to manipulate. All right, this, is the, this is John Anglin's cell. Okay. And Brother Clarence right there. Wow, so they're side by side. Recognizing what this discovery could mean for them, West shared the information with his adjacent inmate, Frank Morris. While West made the initial discovery, it was Morris who ultimately emerged as the mastermind, owing to his extraordinary intelligence. According to reports, Morris had an IQ of 133, placing him among the top 2% of the world's population in terms of cognitive ability. Morris kickstarted the escape plan enlisting the cooperation of brothers John and Clarence Anglin, who occupied the neighboring cells, which facilitated constant communication. To reach the ventilation pipe hole discovered by West, located behind their cells, the inmates had to navigate through passageways intended for sanitary ducts. 
Once outside their cells, they could climb these ducts to reach the ventilation hole and cut through the steel rods, ultimately giving them access to the prison roof. Each cell contained a small ventilation opening, and although it was too narrow for passage, Morris observed that years of neglect had weakened the prison walls. The damage was aggravated by the corrosive effects of seawater, and therefore, the next step in their plan was to exploit this vulnerability by digging through the walls. They lacked proper tools, but this was not a hindrance to their determination. The inmates cleverly utilized spoons they had obtained secretly, steadily chiseling away at the walls day by day. The process of widening these openings was painstaking and demanding by itself, and on top of that, the inmates also had to be vigilant. They conducted their work during nightly musical instrument hours, routine maintenance work, and other such times when the prison environment would be noisy and hence would provide cover for their digging efforts without raising any suspicion. The four inmates timed their activities to coincide with moments when they were out of the guard's line of sight, while one of them was appointed to keep watch over the corridor, alerting the others to approaching guards. There was also the risk of being detected during prisoner counts. However, there was one unexpected factor working in favor of the conspirators. None of the nearby inmates betrayed them. Not only this, but some inmates also supported the endeavor out of solidarity. Reportedly, nearly 80 inmates were aware of the escape plan during the digging process, yet not a single individual revealed this information to the authorities. There was yet another hurdle. They had to conceal the openings they had painstakingly created from the view of the guards. Cleverly enough, the inmates crafted cardboard plans in the prison workshop and even painted them to match the cell walls. Their personal belongings were strategically placed in front of the openings to better conceal them. And finally, after months of hard work, the inmates successfully made the openings wide enough to fit their bodies. However, their work was far from over. They had just completed the first phase of their plan, and their ultimate goal was to leave the island without being detected. Although it was a Herculean task to cross the sea, they managed to come up with a plan to construct a boat using materials that were available to them. They stumbled upon an article in a mechanics magazine outlining the process of crafting a rubber boat and life jackets from raincoats, which were plentiful in the prison. With the help of their fellow inmates, they collected and stole 50 raincoats for their endeavor. The only space available to store and assemble these items was on the roof of their cells, precisely where West had discovered the opening of the ventilation duct. But the problem was that guards routinely monitored this area to oversee inmate activities. However, West and Morris managed to figure out a clever scheme. West persuaded the guards that they needed to cover the bars above the cells with blankets and sheets to prevent dust from falling during cleaning. He consistently highlighted the issue, and ultimately, he gained permission to cover the bars, thereby concealing their workshop from view. This security oversight was a significant lapse for a prison known for being impenetrable. However, it remained absent from official reports, only coming to light in 1990, a full two decades after the incident. The blankets and sheets kept the workshop successfully hidden for a span of two months. During this period, the inmates transformed the area into a fully equipped workshop, bringing up all necessary tools. They took turns constructing the rubber boat, life jackets, and cutting the rods on the ventilation duct opening. Their prolonged absence from their cells was a significant risk, and to counter the threat of sudden inmate checks, they came up with another innovative solution, crafting fake heads to deceive the guards into believing they were asleep. The conspirators utilized readily available materials found in their cells, such as soap, cement dust from the digging process, toilet paper paste, and dyes from the prison workshop to skillfully fashion lifelike replicas of their own heads. In this way, the inmates continued their nightly rotations in their secret workshop. The much-anticipated night of June 11, 1962, finally arrived, the night of the Great Prison Break. 
As the prison lights went out at 9.30 p.m., the four inmates sprung into action. Each carefully positioned their fake head on their bed, covering it with a blanket to dupe the guards. They proceeded to open the ventilation openings they had dug over the preceding months, navigating their way through the back corridor of their cells towards their workshop, and ultimately to the ventilation duct opening leading to the prison roof. Despite their thorough preparations, only three of the inmates successfully liberated themselves from their cells. West encountered an unexpected setback, as the cement he had used to seal the ventilation opening had hardened over time, making it quite challenging to break through once again. Allen persisted in his attempts to join them as soon as possible, while the three forged ahead. They readied the rubber boat and life jackets, dismantling the steel rods from the ventilation duct opening. Despite their meticulous preparations, Allen remained trapped in his cell, unable to reunite with them. According to their prior agreement, if any member encountered difficulties, the others would press on without hesitation. Thus, Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers continued their journey, stealthily reaching the prison roof and effortlessly cutting the fences on the prison walls before making their way to the beach. By 7 a.m., the morning alarm signaled the start of the day, prompting guards to discover the fake head in Frank Morris's cell and raising the alarm. A thorough search operation involving authorities and the FBI commenced, and Allen, who had been unable to escape his cell, was questioned first. While he seemingly cooperated with the interrogations, it was suspected that he withheld information about what his fellow escapees planned to do after reaching San Francisco. Subsequently, other inmates were also questioned, but nobody was particularly forthcoming with valuable information, leaving investigators at a dead end. Despite exhaustive searches of both the island and its surroundings, authorities failed to uncover any sign of the escapees, suggesting they had effectively vanished into the sea on their boat. The search effort gradually expanded, evolving into one of the largest operations ever conducted by the FBI. Despite extensive investigation spanning 15 years under the FBI's watchful eye, the case was eventually transferred to local authorities. The FBI officially concluded that the inmates had perished at sea, yet doubts persist regarding this verdict. Despite its reputation as the most secure prison in the world, the Alcatraz's weaknesses were revealed to the by the successful escapes of the three individuals who managed to break free, and till date, no trace of them has been found. The detailed planning behind the Alcatraz prison break proved to be effective, even though it is still shrouded in mystery.